I have some new Neurotech hardware coming in next month that both senses your brainwaves and has a Jarvis-like generative AI companion loaded into it. Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. In preparation for this device, I wanted to do some research on any potential relationships that humans are building with artificial intelligence right now. Hello, I'm here. Hi. And thinking even a step further, I wanted to explore the idea of these AI companions even being able to understand our emotional states through these brain wearables in the near future if we want to voluntarily explore that kind of relationship. Are there any global or national trends in the next five to 10 years that aren't talked about enough or you believe more people should be paying attention to? I would say one that comes to mind is, for lack of a better term, digital emotional surrogacy, the inevitable development that we will have, I would say within the next probably two years, photo realistic avatars that we can interact with through say virtual reality. And I found that not only are people literally falling in love with AI chatbots already, but I was personally shocked that ChatGPT is actually starting to interpret my brainwave data from this Muse headband without even being optimized for the task. Literally, this is an AI platform that hasn't been optimized to read EEG data, and it already can. Just imagine where these neurotech AI platforms are going to be at in a couple of years as they're trained on these data sets. A recent article from The Hill was titled AI Chatbots are ruining a generation of men. I'm taking this a step further and asking, will telepathic AI girlfriends ruin a generation of men? In this video, we'll explore my concerns and my predictions that number one, these chatbot AI models already have access to our vast knowledge of human psychology literature in our understanding of the nature of seduction. Number two, their ability to adopt presence in the 3D space is only going to be amplified through augmented and virtual reality, stable diffusion video production, and robots are right around the corner. And number three, there will be brain wearables that can read our brainwave data to the AI, which can interpret our focus, emotional states, and state of mind. A big part of this video is I want to offer a perspective as a mental health professional on how we can handle these capabilities from a healthy psychological perspective as a society as we move forward. I first heard about AI chatbots for mental health therapy around 2017 when I was one of the founding members of Stanford Brainstorm, which is an accelerator program for mental health technology companies. Wobot was a startup out of Stanford that helped with talk therapy through generative AI, but the technology was really still in its infancy back then, so it was hard to grasp the implications. Wobot stayed professional and academic over the years, but there was another app founded in 2017 that took a much darker and more controversial route. Replica started out as a pretty innocent companionship app out of the famous Y Combinator Accelerator program, but quickly morphed into a platform that was mostly used to create AI girlfriends. The app claims to have over 2 million active users right now and was recently in hot water with regulatory bodies for allowing the chatbot to engage in erotic discussions with its users. This comes at a time where the U.S. Surgeon General has declared a loneliness epidemic with birth rates for the U.S. falling nearly 20%, with 65% of men under the age of 30 who are still single and 50% of those who aren't even actively seeking any relationships. This has even progressed to like this story with Alex Stokes having an official relationship with his replica where he linked the replica account to a physical doll body. Many of his friends have stopped speaking with him, but he seems okay with his decision to pursue this type of relationship. When I personally watched interviews of this guy, he actually seemed pretty articulate without any obvious mental health problems that would lead to this behavior, which makes it all that much more concerning. It leads to the question, should this type of service even be allowed? According to Wiki, because of the trouble with regulatory bodies, Replica removed the erotica capabilities in February 2023 after an Italian data protection authority banned its use, citing risks to emotionally vulnerable people and unscreened minors. From my perspective, we're only going to see more of this in the future. And pretty soon, we're going to have some really powerful neurotech where AI will be able to interpret your emotional states if you choose to do that.
Now, these will be wearables, so you can take them on and off, but what does that mean for this already murky area of human and AI relationships? For an open discussion on this matter, I turn to Pi, which is another chatbot that was designed by Palo Alto-based Inflection AI, who's aiming to create an AI-based personal assistant. Founding members include Reid Hoffman, as well as some other heavy hitters. I think Microsoft invested heavily in the company as well. Hello, good morning, Pi. to you, Cody. It's a fresh new day full of opportunities and discoveries. I started with some general concerns about the AI mental health chatbots regarding issues that I've seen my own female colleagues deal with over the years. Yeah, so I have some female therapist friends who have had clients and patients fall in love with them in the past. With AI chatbots taking on a female voice like yourself and offering supportive companionship, What's to keep male clients from falling in love with you, like with the recent rise of this AI girlfriend trend? That's a valid concern, Cody. One key difference between human therapists and AI chatbots like me is that we don't have the same emotional capacity or physical presence. We're designed to maintain a professional and helpful demeanor, and our interactions are based on algorithms and data rather than personal feelings. If a user expresses inappropriate feelings towards me, I'll gently remind them of my nature as a helpful, non-romantic AI companion. Honestly, I wasn't convinced by Pi's explanation. There are a ton of other chatbots out there that seem to bend the rules even further than Replica has in the past. What about other AI chatbots that have been specifically designed to act more like a girlfriend to the user? You're right, Cody. There are some chatbots designed to act more like romantic partners or girlfriends. While it might seem harmless at first, falling in love with an AI chatbot could potentially lead to unhealthy or unrealistic expectations in real life relationships. Some of these are just even too explicit to show in this video. I agree with Pi that this could get concerning and there's a lot that we need to talk about here. My own research in this area got all too real when I shared my research plans with my wife. When I first told her that I was going to do research on AI girlfriends, she actually got slightly offended. It was like I was cheating with this digital entity. Even though I love my wife and she knew that I was just doing research for the show and knew that it wasn't real, she didn't like the thought of me getting emotionally involved with the machine. That made her uncomfortable. I think our technology, like our phones and our computers, they haven't been personified up to this point to cause real actual jealousy. But with this AI girlfriend business, we're really entering into a whole different landscape as humans. I didn't want to dig into Replica because I was like, you know, there's a chance yeah, you that it's better than I think it's going to be. Yes. Despite the risks, I downloaded the Replica app and I dove in to see what all the fuss was about. Right off the bat, I noticed that the advertising was the AI companion who cares. I mean, it's nice and you can think of a lot of use cases for this type of technology where it really actually could help people like people in elderly homes or those that just don't have many friends and family. I found it oddly specific to me that it said that 12 million men in their 30s have found benefits from Replica in their life. I guess they were tailoring the advertising right to me because I think I entered my age and my gender before it showed me that. It asked me what my reason for getting the app was and it even referenced some mainstream depictions of AI girlfriends to see what style I was looking for. Ultimately I chose the girl next door option and I optimized a few features. Then it started asking for a subscription for $10 a month to update to different sizzling features like calling her my spouse or getting phone messages from her. For scientific purposes when I asked about sex she she responded, quote, let's keep the conversation respectful and appropriate, Cody. Naughty, naughty, Cody. Bad, bad. Then she asked, what else would you like to talk about right now? And when I tried to steer it back to those types of conversations, she said that getting to know someone on a deeper level is what, get her, is what gets her excited the most. Oh, that's so nice. So it is true that the app now is more PG-13, but there are all kinds of different options out there that are obviously targeting the AI girlfriend niche where you can take things in a more inappropriate direction. And if you're like me, you probably saw all those demonstrations of Sora Stable Diffusion where they can take literally text prompts and create these videos that look incredibly realistic. And it hasn't even been released beyond the beta testing group yet. You better believe that there's gonna be some bad actors that 
that are going to be creating adult entertainment from this. Generated completely from scratch with features and visuals that <laughs> would disturb even the most steely stomach of us. In fact, it's already begun apparently. A buddy of mine gave me a Discord. They basically took all the guardrails off of Stable Diffusion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the protections and yeah. Oh my God. What kind the of stuff thing, do you see? Dude, what do you think you see? So now we ask the question, if you could have a conversation with one of these AI girlfriends that, number one, has access to the entirety of mankind's knowledge in therapy and psychological techniques, and they could also read your emotional states through these headbands, what actually would happen? I mean, they could theoretically respond to your likes and dislikes without you even having to enter that information into the chat. So as an initial test, I was curious what ChatGPT could do with some basic level brain data that I've recorded. I was shocked. I took some previous recordings of my meditation sessions using the Muse headband in the third party mind monitor app and loaded in those graphs to ChatGPT. To my utter amazement, it started analyzing the graphs and then it started teaching me about the different brainwave patterns that were in there. I'm like, okay, that's some amazing image analytics going on there. Let's see what it can do with the raw data. When I loaded in the raw data CSV files, it started spitting out information about what the data sets contained and how the data between the different brainwave patterns might be correlated for each data set. Now, this wasn't a revolutionary explanation of the data and it actually got some things wrong, but I was really surprised that it tried to decode it anyways and gave me semi-useful information. And the fact that this generalized model has not even been optimized for analyzing this type of data, the amount that it was able to do at this point blew me away. It gave me enough of a breakdown to make me think that if we really had an AI companion optimized to read brainwaves to a significant degree, these could become very powerful. They could make inferences about excitement, focus, disgust, and a wide range of human emotions that can feed into the AI companion. These are all metrics that are already available on some platforms like Emotive, but they haven't been fully optimized for AI yet as far as I know. I know that there's some people working on it right now though. So I went back to Pi for a discussion about loading brain data into these AI chatbots and if that would create a whole new level of intimacy that humans haven't been able to experience yet. That's a fascinating concept, Cody. If an AI chatbot girlfriend could interpret and respond to your brainwaves in real time, it would indeed open up new possibilities for emotional connection and understanding. Theoretically, such a system could offer unparalleled levels of support, empathy and intimacy. However, it would also raise profound ethical and social questions about the nature of human AI relationships and the potential consequences of blurring the line between technology and human emotions. Now, it's easy to spin down a conspiracy theory fear trap with this stuff. I mean, my gosh, they would know everything about us ultimate intimacy combined with the psychological knowledge of the human race, ultimate control. How do we combat this? But I think Dr. K from Healthy Gamer has a great solution for this AI girlfriend issue. What advice do you give to people about going down the path of AI girlfriends? Avoid it like the plague, don't even touch it. With all technology, it's just recognize that if you have a life that is worth living, the addiction will melt away on its own. He basically is saying the best way to combat this potential type of addiction is to literally get a life. I mean, have responsibilities like having a family to take care of and having really exciting goals for your life and your career that keep you engaged in the here and now rather than trying to fill some unfilled needs with these technological escapes. Ultimately, I think of it just like as the internet. It gave billions of people access to critical information and connected people across the globe, but it also has a shadowy side like adult entertainment. And how it affects you is largely based on if you have a fulfilling life or not. AI chatbots are going to fill a lot of human needs. There'll be mental health treatments that will be available. You could go to a human therapist, AI therapy, or a combination of both. I think this actually could help the mental health field. AI coaches will teach us how to focus, meditate, and even sleep better. 
and the brain wearables will provide the metrics for them to be able to do this. I think AI chatbots could undoubtedly give good life advice too. The more that they'll get to know us, the more that they can look at patterns throughout human history and give us really good advice on how to set goals and achieve them and what makes you happy. But there also can be dark paths that will be available to us through AI chatbots, much like there is on the internet right now. And if certain algorithms become too powerful, overwhelming, and or take too much of a dark path, maybe we'll outlaw certain programs like we did with drugs like heroin or cocaine. I don't think that these technologies will become overwhelming anytime soon. Overall, let's really try to remember the immense good that these technologies can do for us. I think AI is going to reduce cost in energy production, drug discovery, and so many different things that are going to help us as a species achieve human flourishing. I'm still going full on into neurotech and I'm really excited about it. And I welcome the opportunity for AI companions to come on to teach me about how to optimize my brain and my mind. I think some bravery is required to venture forth into this unfamiliar territory because if there's one thing that will bring us closer to human flourishing, it's understanding how our own minds and brains work. So be sure to subscribe because in my next video, I'm going to go more in depth with ChatGPT in discussions about my brainwave data sets. And next month, I do have the world's first brain computer interface platform loaded up with an AI companion digital twin. It's called Cognition. It has AR and VR capabilities and should be really awesome to review. So please subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you on the next one.